growing up, my high school years were back in the 70s. And uh, growing up, I was the tail end of the hippie generation. Mm -hmm. And the back to the, you know, it's very back much to the, in the back to the land movement. And the idea of, you know, finding your own plot of land mm -hmm. and building it, which, mm -hmm. which you're talking about, but something different. I mean, because you, you talked about community, which I think the back to the land had a strong sense of community right, too. Right. People, people sometimes think that you're just, you know, but the notion was off the grid. Right, right. Well, well their idea of off the grid was wood and uh, kerosene and things like that. And um, our idea of off the grid was, was still wood because it's a biomass. It, well, we call it biomass now, but back then they called it wood and wood stoves. Uh, but we also decided to put solar panels in for hot water or solar, or solar panels in for electricity. Mm -hmm. And we've decided to, to add wind generator uh, power. And we also decided to look at other options, possibly hydro. So when we did our land search, we were looking for land that would meet those kind of needs, that would have mm -hmm. a natural earth berm, a shield from the north winds. We designed our house to be uh, south facing that would allow it to have solar gain. And we thought about how to put a solar electric system in. Now this is uh, about 1996 or 97 when we decided to go ahead and buy one. Well this was extremely frustrating because there wasn't anyone selling anything around here uh, except for what I call the two dog and a truck model. It's, a, it's generally a, a contractor that has a ladder and a truck and maybe has a couple of solar panels but you can never find him at home and he never calls you back and by the time he does get back to you it's maybe seven months later and it's seventy thousand dollars or something that was extremely frustrating for me having been in the business and having gotten the catalogs for the years i knew what these things cost and i just wanted to find a, a way to afford it myself so uh, there is a company called real goods and what attracted me to them was that they actually had a retail store they had had several retail stores, but they had closed because they just weren't viable at the time. They, for a lot of reasons, they only had the one. And I contacted them and I said, hey, how about opening up one of your solar stores in Vermont? And they were like, hey, man, that's a good idea. We should do that. Well, California kind of like, <laughs> will uh, we'll act like that sometime. And you say, well, that's great. I want to order some stuff. OK, that's cool, man. We'll, we'll do that. Let's do that. And then about a year later, I called him again. I said, that, you know, we'd love to have a store. Do you think you could open up a store in Vermont or New York or something? Mm -hmm. Hey, that's a cool idea. We should do that. So I kind of realized that wasn't going to happen. Um, it, it's too bad because the original founder, John Schaefer, is a friend of mine, and he wanted actually to do very similar things as what we were doing. But anyway, we opened up the, we, we actually, we, we, we ordered our things from Real Goods. We, we put them in ourselves. It wasn't really hard. I, I've often made the analogy that it's very similar to hooking up a computer or a uh, stereo system. You remember back in the day you had your, uh, you had your tuner and you had your speakers and you had your uh, CD uh, record player, whatever it is back then, but you plug these things in and there's not a heck of a lot of difference between that and solar uh, or computer. Computer has your processor, your keyboard, your input device, and then some sort of a uh, output device, a printer or something, or a monitor. Well, the concept is very same. These things are modular, more or less. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you look at it that way, it takes, it takes a lot of the mystery out of it. Mm -hmm. So we, we bought an inverter. We bought a few panels. Uh, there it is, the inverter. Think of it as a processor or a tuner. The panels are the production device. The batteries are a storage device, like you have in computers. And then you have an output device. That's uh, your breaker panel or your whatever. So there's really not a heck of a lot to to really make anybody nervous. We put these things together. We were able to do it ourselves for not a lot of money. And the next thing we knew, we were a hit in the neighborhood because we still had power and water when everyone else was running out. Uh, there were ice storms that you remember in New Hampshire. We had some horrific ice storms. Well, people were calling us from the neighborhood saying, when did your lights come back on? I said, well, they never went out. Why? <laughs> and that was, that was kind of the the beginning of where we wanted to uh, see it as a as a business opportunity. Mm -hmm. Now, stepping back uh, a second to the actually, I was reading your uh, the piece we were talking about in Vermont business. Oh, the Vermont business. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Going back to your your formative years. I mean, mm -hmm. um, are, are there any elements of this stuff uh, going way back? Well, yeah. Um, that, that article mentioned that I grew up in a housing project mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, in Bridgeport, Connecticut, and, th and that's, uh, Bridgeport's 
has a reputation. It's a is, is a tough place. It's a hard scrabble life down there. And I lived in a in a back then they would have called well, it was um, minority or whatever. But back then uh, I think the minor the actual races were probably represented fairly evenly. In any case, um, it it was a it was a tough life and. We lived in a, in a poorer side of the city, so one of the skills that I developed early on was how to negotiate. <laughs> I'm not a big guy, or at least I, not, I wasn't then, and uh, we had five kids, and you know I learned how to get along with people, mostly by just figuring out f what it is they want and figuring out help them to get it without mm -hmm. taking a beating. <laughs> that's you know that's a philosophy of business. I think it still yeah. works out. Uh, but don't um, get beat up. <laughs> no, right. Don't get beat up and and try to help other people figure out what it is they want. Mm -hmm. And you know without without uh, you know giving away the store or whatever, but just try to figure out how to talk mm -hmm. and communicate. And There's also an industrial background. Yeah, right. Bridgeport had been this this great town uh, that had all these wonderful inventors and all these wonderful products, uh, and really blossomed uh, blossomed during World War II. Mm -hmm. uh, so it had just you know there was this great tax base of industry, but as I was growing up, you know, as in my teenage years, uh, little by little the plants were closing and moving to Mexico, and they were moving to the south, and then ultimately they probably moved uh, many of them overseas, and the town began to lose its tax base. In a town that has a certain need for for money for fire departments and police mm -hmm. and, and, and schools, if it doesn't have those things, it starts to to get anemic and then people don't want to live there anymore and the property values go down and then you get a crime and drugs and all kind of thing. So I watched Bridgeport go through that and it was sad because I love the town and we thought at some point, well, it's not even safe to live in here and then the whole idea of, of living at the behest, as, as, as you say, of, of a job and uh, it's the whole culture just se just didn't seem natural to me. It didn't seem like a place to live anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so we decided to move to Vermont and and follow in the Nearing's example, buy some land and build build the house. Mm -hmm. um, and when we got here, uh, my first job was my first thing I was going to do was uh, run a little printing press. And I have a hand powered, or actually a foot powered. It's a it's a, a treadle powered printing press from like 1860 or something. Uh, with hand type, and I was going to do craft printing. And what we had there, uh, I was going to work for the town nearby, which mm -hmm. is Springfield, Vermont. And their industries now were j just after we moved in, all of a sudden in decline, and they were closing their factories and laying off everybody. I thought, my God, not again. Mm. There's got to be some th some immunity to what this. What kind of industries were going out at that point? Uh, they had the uh, Springfield had this um, heritage of ingenuity. They were precision machining. Mm -hmm. They could they had machines that actually could mill and and fabricate to the thousandths of an inch, to the nanometer, as mm. they say. It was just m amazing mm -hmm. focus on on precision. Mm -hmm. So they called it Precision Valley. And one company had most of those companies in mm -hmm. its in its um, uh, domain. Mm -hmm. Little by little, it started closing them and moving them, and here and there, and 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 pretty soon, Springfield was looking awfully, you know, like Bridgeport. Mm. And I thought, you know, well, there's got to be at some point a, a a line drawn in the sand where we don't just quit losing our industries all the time. And I, as part of my marketing for the press, I, I was trying to sell my marketing skills to mm -hmm. um, the technical college. Oh, getting your play. microphone under the air. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. And you zoom in a little bit. The. Uh, idea came to me that Springfield's background really had been renewable energy power. Mm -hmm. They have a river that runs through it and a lot of the old factories had originally hydro power mm. as their, as their um, uh, source of power. So I thought, hey, if we could get the hydroelectric plants to put the power into these factories, then they could make more renewable energy products like wind generators and more hydropower mm -hmm. and solar panels and that kind of thing. And that was the uh, the idea that I began to focus on, build rebuilding the industries at Springfield. And then I thought, well, maybe we'll need a, a place to sell them. And that became, that with, with the need for a store became the two, some, two of the parents of the solar store model. 